It's the 5th of June. 2011. I'm an American on the streets of Cashel where I live and someone drove a car into the local jewelry shop. The guard doesn't want us to stop. And now for some international news. Sunday Times, Sunday Business Post and a little bit from the Financial Times. Inside the Sunday Times some stuff that caught my eye. As an American living in Ireland, a second rescue is on the horizon, says Neil Gibson in his Irish Outlook column. He's pointing out the reasons why that may happen, pointing to higher living costs here in Ireland, higher taxes, higher interest rates, job uncertainty, falling house values, all these kind of things affect us. I know the impact is it'll be before, it won't be before 2013, before consumers have sufficiently repaired household finances to increase spending again. We feel that as well, and we'll write it off, spend time at home. Won't even have money for a staycation, I don't think. Time to wake up and smell the IMF coffee, says the Sunday Times in their column under comment. Introducing water and property taxes form part of the program agreed with the IMF. That is um, just maybe that wasn't acknowledged by the current government coalition, but that's actually the way it is. And downtown Dublin, the way it's going to be, flash mobs across the streets of Dublin because, according to Ethan Shorthall, the expiration of legal protection of the Joyce work finally allows the work to be celebrated. Joyce Estates really, really well renowned for protecting their copyright or intruding upon the Creative Commons with their claims to copyright. I've got this stuff over on my web blog, www.insideview.ie, if you're ever interested in reading about it. Money, read that section, the pullout from the Financial Times. If you have money to invest, inside some stuff I'm interested in. Alice Ross says, fund managers are looking at opportunities for technology, but actually it's not where you think towards things like Google or Groupon. It's actually in, by using funds to invest in stuff like the semiconductor industry and they cite Altera, NetLogic, Altma, as well as Aruba, Aruba Networks and Meru Networks. Good ideas about where to put your money if you've got it to invest. Bubbles like Facebook, probably not as good of a place. Mike Southern says social work is lucrative for us all. He writes a column called Entrepreneur in the Financial Times. Points out something that Ewan McIntosh was talking about when he visited here in Ireland. Enterprise zones, 100% discount on rates, capped at 275,000 sterling spread over five years, access to super fast broadband, broadband, and Mike points out some other things. That when you get together with a local council, chambers of commerce, and stakeholders, you can actually form your own LEPs. And when you put it in um, hand in glove with some of the tax breaks Ireland's thinking about, it could result in a really, really good thing. The Irish election for president is heating up, and inside the Sunday Business Post, some other things, including a follow-on to the money item in the Financial Times. Tax breaks may be given to the gaming sector, says Gavin Daly, and it takes all on board something that Fred Herrera was talking about on the phone to me. Section 481 tax relief, if it's put into the games sector, would allow people to invest up to 50,000 euro into a, into a production, it currently does, for film and television, but you could put the same amount of money into, say, the games industry. 100% tax relief on that investment. The investment Shannon has an aviation hub. Put a big question mark by that. Let's see how that's going to come out. We're talking about running an exhibition, some kind of a conference in Shannon towards the end of the month of June. Let me run to that. I like airplanes. How to ensure your information. Relevations that Emma Kennedy points out about consumers' data not being actually protected. We affect, we're affected by that based on people calling to the house. Somehow they got the access to the information that we have. Knew our names. Adrian Weckler runs a very tight line about tech elites. Points out some interesting things, though. In his column in the Sunday Business Post, he says, between 2000 and 2008, the number of maths and science graduates produced by Ireland increased by only 1%, but graduates in law, PR, marketing, and business soared. People were, were choosing back then non-technical pursuits, and it's, and it's the same kind of a thing. And he says, you know, you go to media, you'll find things like The Apprentice or Dragon's Den as technology-free zones. And he says, you know, getting it to where Irish colleges and universities can produce really high-quality competitors in a tech space means you'd have to go down the path of building an elite institution, words that, well, don't appeal to the Irish taxpayer. And then he kind of steps into the space of fees. If you read between the lines, Adrian Weckler probably likes the introduction of fees. How about the back of my garden? Some stuff here I want to show you, starting with the lavender. Good stuff, counting on the fragrance to be throughout um, our back garden. Strawberries growing well, brought in some 
from the outside. The carrots and tomatoes, as you would expect this time of year, nearly bountiful. And uh, Virginia willow taking up a roost next to the gate. And finally, we've got a willow, we've got a maple tree that's growing. All these things can be seen on Flickr.com, stroke photos, stroke Irish eyes. Uh, before I leave, Peter Donegan, if you're watching, tell me what's on my red roses here. And I'll listen to your sideshow more religiously. You can catch up with Peter on iTunes. Sideshow is carried on Dublin City FM and on all fine earbuds around the world. This is Bernie Goldbach at InsideView.ie saying bye for now. <laughs>